I'm from the islands. What's up, bro? What's your name, bro? My name is Bulu Bulu. Bulu Bulu. Like I'm underwater, bro. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bulu, bulu, bulu. It's Bobby, like, but if you say it underwater, yeah, that's how it comes out. I went to Hawaii with uh. Well, let's uh, how about a round of applause for Kalila's here. Um, we got <laughs> Gilbert. We got Jora and um. Jora. <laughs> yes. We got Jora from Game of Thrones here. Frenzo. Tell us why George is Jora of the Andals. Because uh, Jora wants to fuck Khaleesi. Khaleesi's leading him on. And um, Jora will do anything, risk his life for Khaleesi. He's not going to get any pussy. And that's what fucking George is. He will debride And I, I, bet you, I bet you money, when he goes to the beyond the wall, mm -hmm. he's going to take a little pill. He's going to pass on. They're going to steal his shit. <laughs> Hashtag Columbia. Hashtag Columbia. <laughs> when he crosses the wall into Columbia. Yeah, yeah. Columbia. He's, he's going to get drugged he's by George, scopolamine. And George is Jora. Jora of the Annals. Right, you know Man up! Man up! Let Jorah. him let him play what the long con. God, I'm tired of your shit. Look, sweetie, what shit? you're a pussy. <laughs> Man up. Mahalo. Uh, mahalo, uh, everybody. Uh, Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, brother. Poor brother. <laughs> Bro brother. Brother. Um, so Kalila and I went to Hawaii with um, her sister, um, her ugly eight Korean friend Jessica, <laughs> um, her stepdad Roger, and um, her mom. And it was pretty cool, man. I sh swam with sharks. <laughs> oh wow! Well, they so was, they paid a prepackaged thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where they were gonna go in the water. Yeah. But they had me. They didn't pay for that for me. They paid it for me just to stay on the this boat. Just to get on the boat, but not to get. <laughs> Which I is didn't. fucking <laughs> bullshit. So you have to watch them have fun. No, no, no. I <laughs> swim with sharks. Are you fucking kidding me? You think that's fun, friend? Friend? Exactly. So I had asked him, "Do you want to swim with sharks?" He's like, "Fuck no." So I only bought for him to get on the yeah. boat and not in the water. But yeah. when I showed up there, ugly Korean girl, Jessica. No, mm -hmm. she's nice. Why do we keep saying that to her? <laughs> she's she's nice. a sweetheart. Korean Khaleesi. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Mother of sharks. But they were like, we're going to go out. I got pay for mine. I'm going to go too. Okay. We couldn't believe it. Why? What made you I... want to do it then? Just me? Yeah. Because I want to prove to this bitch right here. <laughs> oh, it was all the pussy. <laughs> That I'm, I'll try something once, bro. Uh huh. I was in South Africa, dude. I, I, sw I got in the cage with the white. Yeah, but that's whites. a cage. It doesn't yeah. matter. Well, that's it doesn't scary, matter. Bro. It's still scary. It's yeah, it's a cage. Oh really? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? All right. Well, you know, it's still scary. Yeah. Look, I'm saying I would never go to s uh, swim in South Africa with great whites outside of a cage because I don't think their visibility is No, I think enough. you should. I think you can handle it, babe. Yeah. No, I don't you think I, I would go, never. Go do it. I would Bob never. Bob will buy go, you a package. Go, what you do? Go to Morton's, get a big chunk of steak. <laughs> Put on your belt. Wrap it to your body and just go in the water. I think you'll be survive. But you know what was really cool about this shark dive? They don't throw chum. They don't do any type of baiting at all. Yeah. These sharks are pelagic sharks. No, That's they just don't where want, they live. You no, know, what they want is the, the, them to be hungry. Oh, what? to eat you. Yeah, yeah. No, come they on. They starve them. What I would do is I put nine meals in there. No. Eat it and then go in the water. Mm. No. So there's all these fucking rules though. Okay? Yeah, okay. Number Tell them one, about the rules. You have to lock eyes. You have to lock eyes. You have to establish dominance with these sharks. Right. What? So there's what? a hierarchy, like being like a dog, right? <laughs> right? So the one in the bottom is submissive. The top shark, it's like a, a pecking order. Yeah. So whoever, mm -hmm. the sharks that swim um, deeper are the ones who are submissive and yeah. the ones who swim up top, which are usually the larger sharks, yeah. are the ones who dominate the bottom shark. So you have to lock have to eyes stay, with it. And lock eyes you and have you have to, to stay above them. You have to your space. You right. have to stay above them. Okay. Another thing is you can't flail. You can't do this to you your hands like, and look oh, like a dying you'll fish. Look like a, you know, so essentially the same <laughs> rules apply to prison. <laughs> don't flip your arms yeah, yeah. like a gay man. Going into the ocean is like going to prison. prison. Don't look weak. Yeah, don't. Yeah, stay above. Lock eyes. You can't right, be don't a bottom flail. bitch. Don't flail your arms. Right, and um, I had a shark fuck me. <laughs> so yeah, I fucked a shark. just like prison. No, it was um, walk us through it. Yeah, what was, it was your, okay. So what you, was going through your mind on the boat feeling. ride over? I wanted there. to die. Why? I wanted to at least lose a limb because I want this the moment. Story. I want this moment with Kalila. I fucking. Oh, <laughs> just to prove her off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. no, the whole time I was like, look, this is. They kept telling us, and I kept telling him too. It's like the boat ride is the most dangerous thing over there. The sharks are generally they're intelligent creatures. They oh, know what they you are. They say that about the dolphins uh, too. Do on. they not? Yeah, but, but if they it's just like, they swim into that Japanese cove full of blood. 
Oh, oh my God. come on, buddy. the nets, the nets. No, there's the whole... blood in that cove because their buddies have died. They still and they're go? going into the water. It's like, come on, man. If I'm walking down an alleyway and I see three dead bodies, I I'm turning the other way. Not a dolphin. Not a oh, dolphin. Oh, my <laughs> friends are yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a party. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm getting stabbed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're not that smart. They're intelligent. And they, for for a fish, and you just aren't <laughs> for on their a menu. fucking fish. They're smart. They're like the Einsteins of fish. But when it comes to comparatively speaking to other animals and human beings, they're fucking retarded. Oh come on! All right, pigs are the smart purpose too. for me. Aloha. To- <laughs> <laughs> All right. The pigs reason smart, I was really too. keen on going on this shark dive, and I know this sounds cheesy, is to kind of remove that mystique and that fear that generally people have of sharks and being you know, a between overfinning and killing these sharks just for their fins yeah. and you know it's sharks do so much for the ecosystem and i really wanted I you to see no they do what do they do they do all they, they they're do. apex predators it's just like saying they they balance out without an apex predator there'd be an overpopulation of the things that they would normally eat yeah. if you're in the top of the food chain you are an essential part of the ecology of where you live so it's if we keep you know killing these sharks at like an alarming rate you're going to fuck up the ocean's ecosystem it's just as simple as that yeah and if people are wasteful about it they'll they'll remove the fin of the shark and then they'll leave the shark there to die Mm. a very very slow death that's fucking brutal at least if you're gonna eat the shark eat utilize the whole animal you know anyways back to your story well also you can fuck up the environment all right because what'll (laughs) end up happening is this all right then the the current what the current what do they call that That titles the curtains will stop fucking moving and then New York will freeze like the day after tomorrow. This sounds like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, Jake Gyllenhaal And I'm in a library up. with a bunch of people with a black fucking security guard and I don't know what to do. Jake Gyllenhaal. But be real though. How did you feel afterwards? Did, what? I, well, I, I was alive. How about so, during? So there's about, that feeling of like, I'm alive. Dude, he, when he got in there, mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. Not only was he the first person in there, oh, but he transformed into a merman. It was like yeah, he was diving. one with a shark. Deep diving. You could just yeah, say Aquaman. I, mean, I think Aquaman. It, I grabbed a fin. I just started no, doing he that. Didn't. that. <laughs> You're a shark rider. I'm doing that thing. You're the prophecy. <laughs> yeah. No, the whole I'm, Aquaman style. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, like it. He he turned into somebody else. Because it's because women are there. I can't have three <laughs> chicks go. We're gonna do this, and then me not do it. I have to do it. And the boat captain is like, mm, "You're not going in." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Damn. So I did that, and uh, we did it, and we. And then after that, we went. We waited in line for like an hour at Giovanni's shrimp at truck. Oh, Shiop Giovanni's shrimp truck. Hawaiian shrimp. That's where all the tourists go. So he, we we we. A fucking hour. That's an hour. That's long for a food truck. For shrimp. This camping was pretty good. But when we after I was done with it, I would have waited again. <laughs> that good, dude. I don't know if I was hungry. I don't know if it was because of survival joy. <laughs> survival joy. Because it was right after. He ordered sharks. six plates. I ordered like six plates. It was so fucking good. The, sh- the spicy one is a little too spicy. Yeah, it just blew my butthole apart. And then we huh? stayed at... Um, <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> we stayed at the Four Seasons. That was the fanciest was place really I nice. ever stayed, I think. It was really nice. And um, I thought to myself, you know, was that a vacation for you? For me, that was more than a vacation. It wasn't a... a I didn't want to go relax. I yeah. wanted to do ocean See, activities. here's the thing. The difference mm-hmm. between me and Kalila is this. All right? <laughs> When she thinks of vacation, think things she thinks of adventure. Yeah. When I think of vacation, I think of coma. <laughs> Sleep. Like I don't want to move. Cocoon. Right? I oh, want to be in a cocoon. Yeah. So to me, Hawaii was more like a job. Yeah. Oh, you're working. Yeah, I have to get up. I'm not getting paid. It's like going to public school. Remember, we went to school. You're like, <laughs> mm-hmm. why the fuck am I getting up for the? I'm not getting paid for this. Yeah. <laughs> We, have you ever thought about that in your high school? You're just sitting there going, I'm not getting paid for this. And I got up yeah. so fucking early. Yeah, but that's your fault because when you first met me, I mean, you claim I put Wonderlust on my yeah. bio. I think you did. And let's suppose that I did. Okay. <laughs> she did. You did. On my Tinder. In capital letters, Wonderlust. Okay. She put an emoji too. Five pictures of, four out of the five pictures in my Tinder profile yeah. were of me free diving. Yeah. Mm. One with a whale shark. It was all just ocean activities. See, boo. Yeah, and so and when then you, I lied. Yeah, and you lied and said I love doing you know all why? of that. Why? 
Because I want the pussy. Because <laughs> I want the pussy. I'm not going to fucking say I don't like the ocean. Bobby, I love, like, yeah, I love all that. I love, yeah. I love I know, crustaceans. I crustaceans. You know what I mean? I love the them. First time uh, anemones. Ever, <laughs> the first time we went to Hawaii, he was like, oh, we're going to do so much. We're going to do so much. Oh I didn't know that so much meant that we would spend five days on the hotel's water slides. That's, That's all the fuck we did. It's so fun, though, guys. Those so water slides. And I, I was love so water angry. Slides. I love those, like, icy things with the little syrup. Oh, the shaved snow cones. Ice. Shaved the ice. Yeah. I love that Bing shit. Yeah. yeah. And I just love hot dogs. <laughs> you know why? Yeah, you know, in, what, that, in, that, no, in, that one, in that one place, the ground where I laid up, they have these hot dog guys out on the beach. I love it. Oh, man. But, um... You know, she goes to let's go to the ocean and see the starfish. Hmm. I go to Hawaii to become starfish. Ah. Just lay there for like with your tube feet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> with my tube feet, just laying there. So you didn't do the spa at all the whole time there. That's oh, the we went to the spa. It was not as like that's not their. Um... It's terrible. Yeah, it doesn't oh, compare really? to like seasons. the Grand Wailea. It doesn't compare spa. to Koreatown. It's terrible. Mm. The 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 steam room yeah, was I not go back. hot. I know too. I did too. Come on, they hooked it up. Be yeah, nice. but we, I didn't. We didn't really pay for it. Oh, we did. Booking. It was from Booking. Remember com. that commercial I did yeah. with Jane Lynch? And it was a free vacation. You, they paid for it. Yeah. Let's borrow. You think I'm gonna fucking spend five thousand dollars a night? <laughs> yeah, your fucking mind. It was just free shit. Yeah, yeah that steam room was awesome. Yeah, steam room was, was amazing. The best steam room ever. Yeah, you're right. It was good. <laughs> Thank you, Booking. dot <laughs> And then there was another place where we went to. It was a white beach, Lenny really Kai. blue water. Yeah. You go in there and you're just like, this is nice. Yeah. Did you really think that? I did, but I could get it from a photograph too. <laughs> <laughs> like Peter's if I'm in, you know, you're, you're in, the, in the lobby yeah. of, the, of the hospital or whatever. He spotted just... somebody at the Lanikai beach and he laughed and he like followed her and laughed at her for 30 minutes. It was a Japanese lady. <laughs> She was dressed, she's in the ocean with me. Okay. She's dressed in a hoodie. But, and also a hoodie that covers her face. Like Full she's line. in Assassin's Creed. <laughs> and she was, like she's about to fucking assassinate somebody. Like she's about to like perch up somewhere? Yeah, I'm like, like it was also, it's Hawaii. It's not the Antarctica. She wasn't wearing, it wasn't like a burkini or anything like religious or anything like that. She just hated the sun. Yeah, what the you can fuck? tell like she was just if she could have worn. Oh, is that one of what those, that was? Yeah, if she could I have thought worn. She was too cold. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a wetsuit. Oh. It was a full on like it was um, swimsuit material. Uh, yeah, but she, she was in a full ninja gear, Assassin's and she was Creed. just floating around. And Bobby was like, "It's Assassin's Creed," and he kept following her the whole yeah, yeah. time. Wait, why did you yeah. stop seeing that? Because I'd never seen anything like it. And also, she's Japanese and she's my enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to know exactly where she is on the page. No one dresses like that she unless she's a fucking you. assassin. She was yeah, kill she's you. there to kill me. Kill the so I'm going to follow her. Follow her. Um, <laughs> and then Steve Byrne was in town. Mm. And I did his show at the, uh, I don't know what it was. In the Blue, Blue, Notes. Yeah, Blue Note Jazz Club. Oh. Mm -hmm. It was pretty fun. I just like, you know what? There's something about. Doing shows in Hawaii. That's really fun. We should do a show in Hawaii. Yeah, we should do a, a podcast show there. Do you think people would show up? Yeah. We have Hawaiian fans. But I, there's something about like just, it doesn't matter the amount of people that's in the audience. It's just just kind of just cool. Like, mm. you know, Don Ho did it. Mm. Like that was Don, Don Ho, Tiny I'm a, Bubbles? Yeah. Tiny I do. Do the song. <laughs> tiny <laughs> Bubbles. Tiny Bubbles. Okay, that's, I don't want to do it. That's all I know. Okay. <laughs> I only know those two words. Just really? tiny bubbles? In but Hawaii. you know that Pat Morita... Um, mm. um, Karate Kid. You know Pat Morita, right? And, you know, he used to go to the Don Ho shows every time. Oh, I didn't know Do that. you know why? To do one joke. Which is? Um, Don Ho would stop his show and go, Pat Morita's here. Pat, Pat Morita, please stand up. And Pat Morita would go, I am standing. Because oh, he's so short, so and he would get a laugh, and he would sit down, and that would get a laugh, and that's it. And he shows up the next day. He go, he, goes, he would come back to the show and do that same joke. <laughs> I am standing. Big laugh. I wonder if that ever ha bombed. Where he did it, where he went, I am standing, and he's just dead silent, <laughs> and he just awkwardly sits <laughs> back down. <laughs> I was in Karate Kid. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he used to do that. But um, how do you like Waikiki these days? We didn't even go there, really. I mean, I did that one show with Steve, but we were on the other side of the island. We were on so. the west side, which is like so yeah. nice. Mm. But it was nice to see you hang out and stuff like that. And um, you famous in Hawaii? Not really. Mm. Yeah, he Asians? is. He is. 
Not really. Oh, he, he did, did a lot of Korean Elvis winking, even by Giovanni's shrimp truck. He kept the whole time, like every time someone wanted a picture, he was winking at Who us. Who cares? <laughs> I like. I have when it's sunny, I blink. Okay, I wink all the time when it's sunny. You yeah. know. Sharks are not afraid of me. What but else did we do there? We were only there for. I eat your uh, pussy. Of, oh my god! <laughs> oh, that was How was Hawaiian was sex? Was Pretty it good. different in a different environment? Good. Um, let me see. I was so tired. I did so much. He he <laughs> spent a lot of time in the hotel, but I would pack my days. And when with she just... says that, it just infuriates me. Why? Why? Because I went to the shark thing one day. I wo- the next day. I woke up and went to the beach thing. White Lanikai. beach. Yeah. Just two activities. Yeah, t- two days in a row. Yeah, but a total that's, of like that's four That's what I hours. do. That's what I did before that. That was my whole life. I never did that. That was a year. You know what? That's I will year. say this. I honestly, I appreciated you so much more. I was like, dude, my my guy is a, is a fucking man. Ooh. When I saw you get in with those sharks, in because there was, there was no hesitation in his mind. He's like, you know, I'm going to do this. And I'm he was not a, a, I'm a fucking it. adventurer at heart. But I can usually <laughs> see. I'm telling you right now, dude. It's like if I but was fit. I'd be a tomb raider, it bro, was with Laura. That. I mean, it was beyond me and Laura that. would go into tombs and fight skeletons. I don't give a <laughs> fuck, bro. This is why you're 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 the man. Why? Because I've been with a lot of people, and even though they're tentative to like, you can always sense their fear throughout the whole experience. Yeah. Once he got in the water, he surrendered, and he just floated around like like a little sea nymph. I've and, seen him. Yeah, and it Dude, was so beautiful to watch, and I was so proud of him. We also went to a safari when I was in South Africa. Yeah, where it was the one we wanted to go to a place where like the animals didn't have any human contact. Yeah, right. Oof. So it was a special one where you're just kind of out there with them. Yeah, Orny Adams almost got eaten by a lion. <laughs> but like we will, like I will literally do it one time. Yeah, you know, like I'll skydive. If somebody said, "Hey, let's," what's that thing where they? Jump off. Base jump. Have base jump. I would base jump. I would Once, not. Yeah. I go to a class and figure out how to open my arms. <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm not gonna just jump like I'm cannonballing into the canyon. What is he doing? What is he doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is Bobby Lee doing? <laughs> yeah, I would take a couple of classes, but um, you do it. I think that we should do a travel show, you and I. Oh, I think be that because you know, you like too. if 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 we there's so many travel shows out there where everyone knows about the food, the culture, and you know they're just smart people. Bobby and I are stupid. He's a slept king. I'm probably sleepier than that. And yes, I yeah. think that we should just go to cities and just kind of like the. Have you seen the Idiot well, we Abroad? Uh-uh. We will. Yeah. I love that. We show will do so it. Much. When I have time. We'll do it. <laughs> okay. When I'm available. We'll do all of that. Contact shit. my assistant. Okay. <laughs> I'm also in a dilemma. Who do we have? I mean, Paulie Shore or Jamie Kennedy? Oh, we don't talk about that stuff. I know. I want to talk about guests it guests and stuff. We have a lot. No, but let's just make a decision. Who's I'm first? Gross. Well, I don't know. What, what if it changes the time this airs? I know. Who cares? We'll get them when we get them. That... No, but they want it. I, they have, they yeah, all want to do it, it soon. This, it doesn't pertain to this this episode, though. Oh, my so God. You guys are a bunch forward. of cowards, huh? I'm done with all of them. Just do all of them. Yeah, okay. I, I want to tell you guys something. What? Before we watched the Game of Thrones yesterday, before... Um, spoiler alert, spoiler. by the way. Turn it off. Um, before we saw Gendry hold that hammer, yesterday my sister called me because she left our apartment and she says, hey, there's somebody in your garage lurking around um, in a bicycle. He's uh-huh. going, he's uh, he's wearing a hoodie and he's going through different cars Damn trying it, to see probably like, you know, steal shit. Uh-huh. And usually, Bobby, when someone, when we hear like a weird sound in the past, he's always been like, you go, no, you check it out, you know? And I'm like, you're the fucking dude, you go, you know? This time around, this is how I know the sharks changed you. What? <laughs> this is how I know. You're to, you make it sound like he's the biggest pussy before the sharks. He what? is. I swear, Liz, Liz, hear me out. Hear me out. I've never seen him do this in my life. I told him, sweetie, my sister says there's a lurker downstairs. He didn't even miss a beat. He went to the kitchen, he grabbed a hammer, Woo! and he ran downstairs. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I got this, babe. I have never in my lifetime ever seen him do this i don't know if it's because you quit smoking yes, or if it's the sharks no. or it's a combo well, okay i just want to let you know whoever sent me this fucking vape pen and stuff is a it's it's a godsend because i'm been i haven't smoked for a week and a half Ooh. tuesday will be two weeks damn it's been so fucking hard mm-hmm. like it's been the hardest thing i've ever had to do wow i don't know how long it's gonna last but it doesn't matter it's day by day i know moment by moment 
But uh, so whoever sent me this vape thing, thank you. I don't know if it's better for you, but fuck it. I'm tr just trying just do it. it. Uh, I'm doing yeah. everything. But I went down there. It has nothing to do with the sharks. It has to do with we've had break-ins. Mm -hmm. And I'm just tired of people coming into my fucking garage. You know? And then I just wanted to... I, I want to confront something. Ooh. Why? I don't know why. I, I what just, would you do to him? Like, what fuck. would you say? Okay, the, you see the guy in the hoodie and he's breaking into someone's car. All right, it, all right, you be the guy. I'm just working here. <laughs> just hammering. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he, if it's a guy that's working here, yeah, I'd be like, I'll, I'd help him. I have a hammer. <laughs> I have a hammer. Let's, get, let's, let's, work, let's work together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, hey, what? What the fuck are you doing, bro? I'm breaking the cars, motherfucker. Yeah? Yeah. You better fucking get out of here. We're going to have a problem. Okay, let's do this. And then we have a problem. What's... And we get enough confrontation. Oh, shit. He goes for the fight. He fights. But I don't think he would do that. Would you take why'd the you hammer make... to his... Why'd you make that choice? <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, why, why you... Rewind, rewind, rewind. Why'd you have to be rewind, like... Rewind, you know... rewind, rewind. <laughs> Samuel L. Jack Jackson in every movie. <laughs> rewind, like, rewind. Scared. Rewind. Ready? Go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm breaking into a car. Go ahead. All right. Yo, man, what the fuck you doing, dude? I'm breaking into a car. No one would no, do no, that. No, no, Why would anyone say that? Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Just keep going. What? Okay, ready. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, what the fuck you doing? I'm breaking the car. What's it look like I'm doing? Breaking into cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. You look, you look strong. Yeah. If Just, you don't get out of here, I am gonna call the cops. And I'm gonna smash your head with this hammer. Oh, oh, I'm God. sorry. I'm okay. Sorry. Did you just swim with sharks recently? Yeah. <laughs> you look feisty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So that's what it would happen. Damn. Um, I don't, you I don't, said you'd always wanted to be a security guard. What? Oh, yeah, that's the thing. When I was down there, I realized one of my dreams is to become <laughs> yeah. a security guard. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I loved peering over, like, different cars and looking <laughs> underneath them. And just and, and I liked doing that little investigation. Like, is there something different about this garage right now? Like, the temperature like, or... The detective. Is there a but draft? you don't want to be a PI. You want to be a security guard. No, I don't want death. Or I don't want to be... I don't want serious shit. But I would love to be a fucking uh, security guard at like Best Buy. Mm. You know what I mean? Or some sort like of petty like, theft. Not even petty theft. Like a place where maybe like security guard at a house. Not a house, but like a an apartment building. The guy mm. in the front. Yeah, I'll just walk you also around. Like, are I'll, the maintenance I'll, guy. <laughs> I would even wear a uniform, even if they, even, if, even if they didn't require me to. I would like make my own. <laughs> hey, you don't have to wear that full suit. It doesn't matter. It's okay. I have, I have a tag. I have my name he tag. makes his own badge. Tag. He buys yeah, it from Party badge. City. No, I would look. No, I would look like. You know what I would do? Is I would look like a cop. Oh, you just dress up like a. Cop. Like I'd have the blue, the same thing that they're wearing. Yeah. And just do a makeshift version of it so that it looks kind of from afar that I might be a police officer. All the I think that's a good thing. All the security guards in the Philippines are um, dressed in white and blue and carry... Um, Scream of sticks. AKs. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, they, they carry fucking semi-automatic weapons. It's crazy. And even if it's like they're security guards of like a, a, um, a compound of like homes and stuff or like a mall... Mall security, they all carry um, that, that. That is a weapons. shocking thing when you go to other countries. Like when I was in Beirut, we were driving around every like 10 minutes. You'd see a tank and some kid, you know, with a machine gun. That's so strange. You have to give people your papers and shit. It's like fucking weird that people live on. I mean, I can't imagine what it's like in Syria, you know, I mean, you. you just the worst kind of life that you could possibly live but it's but like, there's also a, a, another end of the other end of the spectrum of living like my friends live in beirut my friend ryan yeah. lives in beirut and he lives the high life like so if you look at all his pictures on instagram like he's living just the most like lavish life in beirut so he always tells me he's always like no you should come here I, it's beautiful here don't even like get you know the guy that when i was in beirut the guy that did the show is Connected to Hezbollah, and he's Jesus. a multi multi millionaire. Damn. I was out there with like Sebastian, Eric Griffin, Danny Masterson. I mean, and we were all staying at this guy's house. Yeah. A, I mean, the guy had money, mm. right? And at that time, I was like, I'll do anything to make money. I got nothing going on. You yeah. know, I had to do those shows. But you know? back in the day, um, Beirut used to be, or Lebanon used to be like the jewel. I of know. that area it used to be like um i'm not saying it was i had a bad time I had a great it was time. like a french riviera right yeah i had a great time the food was great and i went to the super disco i yeah, know uh, you told us that's a whole johnny thing super right? disco but um it's just shocking to see that shit 
And it's not shocking to see the shit this weekend, man. Oh, Charlottesville. Ooh. George says, okay. What? What did I say? What did oh, God. Oh, 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 what did you say, bro? George says he was in Michigan this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Jora. Where yeah, were you? I saw photos of you online. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're, Every photo was of me, according to you. It was I like know. 50 me's in the, they in the do, crowd. They <laughs> look like you. You're that type of white. Aww. No, I, I, he got out of the system. He got. Out of the oh, he's prison? not. The, no, he's not. He, but he could have. So he has the look, the visual. Look. You have the look. You also, you're from an, the farmlands. Yeah, but his yeah. parents are nice, kind. Okay, I'm like, gonna say this right people. now. Let me say something right now. Okay. Did you see the interview of you know the guy that ran over the lady? Uh, Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that. Oh, his guy. mother's no, no, no. interview. His maybe. mother was interviewed. She was in her garage or something. I saw it on CNN. And she's like, I didn't. I thought he was just a Trump supporter. <laughs> like, he said, all right. I thought that just meant that he was a Republican. Oh, right? And he was, They, you know, you don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, people around you, they don't know. So it doesn't matter what his parents did. He w- He's just one of those white dudes. Look at his face. Smile, George. <laughs> yep, yeah, see? Yeah. But um, it's just, I, also, just on top of it, I'm not going to get into politics, okay? I'm not. All right, but the people that are, are opposing the neo Nazis, they're not in the same fucking category. What do you mean? Do you I don't opposing? agree with that. What do you I mean? think that everybody from the left side, middle, and right have very loudly denounced um, what the the white nationalists. Is what is that what you're saying? No, that's not what, what I'm you, saying. What, oh. saying? Okay. what I'm saying is is that there's white nationalists versus other. That they're protesters, right? Or counter protesters, oh, like, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's the conflict, right? Yeah. But without the neo Nazis, they are doing their little shindig. Yeah. There would be no counter protest. The, the, the only reason why people are there oh, is because that, they are there. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're saying. Okay. Right? So it's like for Trump to make them equal in some way, oh, 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 equally man. responsible, yeah, yeah. yeah. is yeah. fucking crazy because he's, that's crazy. they yeah. wouldn't be there if the neo-Nazis weren't there. Right. Yeah. He's, it's not, it's not many sides. It's one fucking side. It's one, it's side. one, one side. side. It's like, and, um, he talked about it two days later. <laughs> yeah. I know, but my point though is, is that it's like these, kind, these uh, also, they're just more um, emboldened. Is that the right word? Mm-hmm. Yeah. People are just coming out more. You, you see it on Twitter. You see it. YouTube. I yeah, it's people are open. just coming out and just letting their racism hang in that way in their, on their sleeve. And you're supposed to hide that shit. <laughs> <laughs> do what we do. Hide it. Be like Us. the Asians. The Asians. No, but I, I, okay, I <laughs> say, okay, I say jokes. Yeah. Like if a Mexican walk by, he's a leaf blower. You know what I mean? I would make a joke hacky, with my friend, yeah, a hacky yeah, joke. A hacky okay. Joke, yeah. I do it with other Asians. That's all in fun. I don't. I really, honestly believe that we're all absolutely equal. Mm-hmm. We are. We're we're human beings. We're a species, and we're all one. Mm. Right. But these motherfuckers really believe that they're better than us. Stop pointing at me. I know. I was just my twisting yeah, yeah, my finger. You show me your diploma yeah, from yeah, Columbia yeah. all the time. It's just it's 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 and they're just they're out and it's like it's scary. It's pretty. Scary. It's not scary. It's just like I, oh God, what are we living? What are we doing? Mm-hmm. What the? F- I mean, we're not going into politics. I'm not saying, but I can't fucking believe this. This is where we're at as a nation. Mm. That you're just they're just out now. Yeah. This is 2017. I mean, we could anyway. It's it's so upsetting. I can't even. I had to say something because, yeah, it's upsetting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one one woman died from it. Two cops. Yeah, from the helicopter. helicopter well, the helicopter. Yeah. What is that? What happened there though? I have no idea. Yeah. Someone threw a rock. I mean, what happened? I, don't know, that's I have sad. no idea. I know it is very they sad. Were they, were they, re- they were responding to it though? Right? Yeah, they yeah. were patrolling. The oh, you're right. Okay, so, okay, that's so. sad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel bad. No, you're, you're, I feel bad it was about your it. Your anger from the other thing just moved on. Yeah, to yeah. That. I yeah. feel bad about it. Are you bad. so angry at that? But like, yeah. angry at the <laughs> people that died too. Oh, yeah. A pebble. A pebble got thrown at that. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I'm also mad at. Um, it's fine when I see white dudes with Asian chicks at the shows that I do. How how much more common is that now? It's a lot. I mean, you see now a lot of like Asian dudes with white chicks yeah. more than 
More now. Before. Yeah, more now, but still the other one the other way around outnumbers them by like a million. Yeah. They sh- I, 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 hey, can I George, you, you have connections with the white people? I'm sure you do. You have some numbers. I know a few of them. Let's just do an exchange program. Oh, I love this. For idea. every two Asian girls you get, you have to give us one white girl. Okay. We talked why about this. A, why, why is that such a low exchange rate? It should be even. Because we're not fuckable in their eyes. Mm. In their eyes. No, that's changing. That's not That's not. You think it anymore. is? I think yeah, it is. Yeah, because I think that, um, like, especially in bigger cities like New York, L.A., or, like, Toronto, say, for instance. Like, I don't think that... I think the playing field's pretty equal now. I think that when you see an Asian guy, it's if he's like an attractive, it's it's they're it's, attractive. It's funny that you say that because um, I ran into Ali Wong and she's like, she like a couple weeks ago and I and she I, you know I was talking about the show that I got whatever, mm. and I'm like it's incredible. I don't even have to do an accent. I said that to her. Yeah, and then she goes, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot you're from a different time. I've never even, I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, that's wow. right, because she's never had to. She's never ever. had to do an accent yeah. in an audition or show. It's just so foreign to her that I've been around a little longer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just remember a time when that's what they wanted. It wasn't always what they wanted. When they yeah, in, the, in the 90s, you. yeah. Yeah. Did, would they cast unless, you for unless it was else? a commercial. No, I know we don't talk about show business because mm-hmm. we're not, but I'm just saying mm-hmm. that um, it's just shocking that things are changing. Mm. So that's right. We have all this progress, right? And then you see something like that bullshit. Yeah, and it just it just takes us back, man. That's all. We're I'm an American. I don't know anything else. Yeah, I'm not going back to Korea. I'm not from there. I was born here. Everything I know, I, the pussy I eat, it's the all, food. It's all American. Made all pussy. All American made pussy, <laughs> pussy bro. Baby. I'm not American made pussy. Oh, right? that right. that's are, true. That is true. You're eating a foreigner. I'm immigrant pussy. <laughs> yeah. It's still very. <laughs> like, it's, got, still, it's, got still kind, it's still kind of top of the line, babe. <laughs> it's kind of. Yeah, yeah. Your pussy's kind. Yeah, of. it's not a hundred percent, but it's pretty good. I mean, for what do you call that giant? Oh, the tomo. It's not tomahawk steak. It's um. It's um. Uh, yeah, the top top of the line, a big giant one, right? T bone. T bone. It's a tomahawk. When is they it, serve it to you on like a giant. What's bone. a tomahawk? Is it tomahawk or tomahawk? I don't know how to say it. Tomahawk. <laughs> I think it's tomahawk. Is or it, we, let's make a tomahawk. How do you pronounce it? Well, you know what? When we were in Tomahawk, when we were in yeah. Hawaii, what happened? I go, hey, do I take a right here on Vineyard? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Vineyard? I read it Vineyard. Vineyard. <laughs> Vineyard. People were so nice to me there because they thought I was local and I was so happy. Okay. We're gonna take a moment for our sponsors, guys. What is it? Brooklyn is my favorite sheet in the whole wide. World. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> Brooklyn is a game changing man. Sleep fact number one, dog. Sleep fact. I get into Brooklyn and she's bro. I fall asleep, bro. It's clean, dude. Ain't no, you know, dirty shit. It's clean, four star <laughs> shit. Right? Yeah. It's clean shit, Brooklyn. No, it really is. It's convenient. It fits to my bed perfectly. You order all that stuff. <laughs> It's it's, it's good. It's good. It's very simple, minimalistic, comfortable, soft without mm. the super marked up price. It's very straight to the point. Great sheets. Yeah. We love it. We do love it. We sleep on I it. I want to get more. Night. Did you order more? We ordered a second one. Yeah, Ooh. get it, get it because I'm telling yeah. you right now, we use it. We have one regular classic and we will have one of the satin finish. Is, very is that the white dotted one we have? That's the classic. That's that a cla- it's right classic. Now. It's a classic sleep, guys. <laughs> you know, Humphrey Bogart, like he slept good like that too, dog. Yeah, so get these sheets. Get it. You want to be like Humphrey Bogart? <laughs> right? You want to be like him, right? Yeah. It's good. It's Where Cary do we find Grant. it? Where can we it's buy Cary it? It's Cary Grant's it's classy stuff, guys. Class. Guys, Bobby <laughs> Kalila clearly love the Brooklyn and sheets. So you can try these sheets and I know you'll love them too. <clears throat> Brooklyn, well, this is so classy. I'm coughing a lot. Uh, Brooklyn.com has an exclusive offer for Tiger Belly. Get $20 off and free shipping when you use the promo code Belly at Brooklyn.com. In fact, Brooklyn is... What is it? Brooklyn.com, right? Yeah, man. Sla- Brooklyn. 
Let him finish. Right. <laughs> In fact, Brooklyn is so confident that you'll love your new sheets. They offer a risk-free 60-night satisfaction guarantee and a lifetime warranty on all their sheets and comforters. There's no reason not to give the sheets a try. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use the promo code BELLY at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com, promo code BELLY. Brooklinen, these are the best sheets In ever. the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Thanks, Brooklyn. Uh, so if you if you guys um I don't know if you guys know this, but I, I, you know my brother's in a band or whatnot, but I, I feel a little hurt because you know I'm a musician too. <laughs> you are like the you know the opening song that's on our podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wrote it and I sang it. We sang it. I know, but I wrote it. <laughs> we also made a new song. Yeah, we did write it. Right. Well, we is a stretch, but <laughs> <laughs> we is a very big stretch. Okay, uh, so it turns producer? out I actually know I might. This is how she does it. Know... I'm writing a song. She goes, do this. <laughs> That's actually what she does. Okay, and listen. I'm like, what? <laughs> I think I know a little bit about what it feels like to be autistic. And this is how... It's because the melody in my mind does not match the melody of my mouth and how I want it to communicate it to Bobby. Yeah. So <laughs> when we're, 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 when he's writing a song and I'm trying to tell him do it this way, mm, yeah. whatever is in my mind, I'm shocked by what comes out of my mouth because it's not the melody in my head. So there's a complete disconnect there. Yeah. And it is so it took us three fucking hours for something for a melody that was like 15 seconds long. I, I am horrible. I can never be a songwriter. So what yeah. was the song? It was oh, no, it's well, very we, we, nice. I have a pretty, couple of songs I've, yeah. I made in Hawaii. Uh, you know, um, can we debut? It's kind of like homeless people when like you know you go you go to L.A. Mm-hmm. In L.A. we have a lot of crazy homeless. Some of them you don't understand what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, but maybe in their minds they know you know they're like I want to say ask for some change, but when they open their mouth they go kaya, kaya, kaya. translation. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe they can't. Is it the same thing you think? That's like if your Wernicke's or Broca's area in your brain is like messed up. That's your like speech area there. And but... when, I, when I said earlier. <laughs> I had no idea what you just said. Yeah, yeah. Hey, beat it, nerd. <laughs> beat it, nerd. <laughs> beat it, nerd. <laughs> uh, just a quick side note. Yeah. You know, before we started the podcast, mm-hmm. yeah. and I said that, is that wrong when I say it? A lot of midgets look the same. Mm, height yeah. wise? I don't know what is your that, fascination is. That is, an a- is that an Asian look alike thing or. What no, it's mean, an like... anatomical thing because of their stature, and it, yeah, they kind of have a similar look. But is I don't that think wrong that's... to say? I, I, I don't wanna... think it's wrong to say. There are a lot of people who have the same anatomical features. Like I think that, like just for instance, that's just like saying. Let me see. Let me think of one thing. Well, people... But that's but you because know what... dwarfism is a disorder, right? It is a disorder. So it's, it's, uh, it's. It's a hormone disorder. So it's just mm. like gigantism. People with gigantism who have the acromegaly, they all Similar. sort of they look all the same. Look like Andre, Andre the Giant. The giant. Yeah, 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 right. Oh, so I don't, it's, it's, it's just an anatomical thing that sort of... Uh, it's, I don't think that it's wrong to say that, but f- to be like, to say they are all the same is wrong. They're not the to same. To say they have similarities is not wrong. Of course they're not the same. Yeah. But you know what? You're right because I, know, I only know really two dwarves. Who? Wee Man yeah. and Brad Williams. Why does that sound familiar? He's a he's comic. He's a comic. Oh. He's very funny. And he's very funny. And when I see Wee Men, I never go, hi, Brad. Yeah. I know it's him. Yeah. And when oh, I see Brad. Because he's your friend. <laughs> yeah. When I see Brad, I go, I don't go, hey, Wee Man. I know it's, you know, so. Yeah, no one's doubting that. <laughs> No one's doubting that you know them. Okay, well then I, I just cleared they're up not, my own thing in my own head. All... <laughs> <laughs> I want to clear yeah. that with myself. They're not twins, Bobby. I know, but I think when I was younger, I never saw dwarves. Mm. You know, in high school, whatever, mm. I never saw one. Mm-hmm. Ever. Maybe on TV, you see them in like in a circus or something. Mm-hmm. Or you, oh, you know, you know, the first time I saw one was yeah, cause you're old. Wizard of Oz. The Oompa Loompa, oh, yeah. right? Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Is it Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Oh. You don't know what that is? No, you I know said Wizard of Oz. Oh, I thought, I thought it was, it was like, like an Asian version. I thought it was like version. Asian version of <laughs> Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I was like, well, how would that go? How would Wizard uh, of Oz uh, go? Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, 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 um, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do a we Wizard to, of Oz Asian version. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Wizard of Oz with, uh, with thick accents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But like the Tin Man's really futuristic. Like mm. he's really made well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's like a, like a Tin Man. He's, he's like, like Sam a by Samsung. Samsung. Yeah, he's <laughs> Samsung. Samsung. Um, the lion. The lion. No hair. No, he just he's, he's airless. He's no man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe he, and maybe he's got limbs missing because the Chinese ate some of them. Oh yeah. <laughs> So is this a Chinese Wizard of Oz? I don't know. Uh, Wizard of Oz. We're, we're, brainstorming. we're brainstorming. We're brainstorming right now, yeah. <laughs> the Scarecrow, what would he be like? A uh, scarecrow? Asian Scarecrow? Yeah, he's he, he's made out of rice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they just keep eating him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's made out of rice. And then uh, Dorothy. Dorothy is uh, Aquafina. Uh, oh, duh. Yeah, we're going to cast Aquafina. <laughs> Wait, Dorothy. who are you in this? Oh, you're the Great Waz. No, I'm the Oz. You don't even see. I'm behind the thing. I'm yeah, yeah, behind yeah. the You're yellow, was, yellow, yeah. yellow curtain. Yeah, I'm yellow was. was. <laughs> and um, I think that'd be great. Wow, don't you think? Because Michael Jackson did a version. There's a black. <laughs> there's a black version of it. I the, never the knew Wiz. that. I wish. Here's the thing. The Miz. The Wiz. Really? Yeah. With I'm telling you right now, with the amount of Asian talent that we know, especially in comedy, you can do it. You could make a Wizard of Oz. <laughs> oh, it's becoming a real thing now. I'm being real. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that it would be a really funny, funny comedy. Yeah. You know? Let's just do it as a sketch. Yeah, let's try it as a play As first. a play like or a something. Community play. You could take it to Broadway. Right. Like yeah, Book Broadway. Of like yeah. Book yes. Of yeah. Write it. Who would you cast? Wizard of Oz. Well, the hairless, I would be David So. David So <laughs> would be the hairless lion. Right? <laughs> You would be the rice man. <laughs> the, rice the rice man. man. The rice crow. Um, the robot. We. It doesn't matter who it is. Steven? Right. No, because it's going to be an android, like mm. a metal android. Oh no, we would have to cover you cover saw, up the face you, you to look at the face. Yeah, he still has to be able Yoon, to Steven sing. Yoon, Steven Yoon. Steven Yoon. Oh, John he's too Cho. handsome to be covered up. Yeah, yeah. And then he could um, be Dorothy. <laughs> Steven Yoon is Dorothy. No, Steven Lee is Dorothy. <laughs> oh, Steven. Oh. My brother's Dorothy. Maybe. Steve Lee. Yeah. Hey, Bob. Uh. Oh, he, there would be no. What's it? What's the dog's name? And is there a dog? Um, Toto. Oh, it's just a pot. This is dog stew. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just walk around with a pot. <laughs> but you yeah. carry it everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Dog stew. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Oh god. Or just right. he, he just have a, like a necklace of dog bones. Dog bones. Yeah. yeah. Aww. Aww. No, this is it. that's too racist. Of, that's we too know yeah. we gotta have we gotta have a regular dog in it. Regular yeah, dog. regular yeah, dog. Yeah. Come on, an Akita or like a fucking. Uh, an Akita. That's Fine. yeah, Akita. that's cute. Yeah, let's Disney it up. Yeah. <laughs> or or like right. a Shiba Inu. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then the what what what, what the wicked witch is it a of the what? east? Is, is it, it the east? W- is it still an Asian person? Michelle Yeoh. It's got to be a it's got to be a black. Oh, a black woman. A black guy. Oh, with black a big guy. ass dick. Wait. Wait, wait so that, <laughs> now it's a big ass wizard. It's yeah, a wizard yeah. now, not a witch. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go black guy with a big ass <laughs> dick. <laughs> Um, and when the house falls on him, his dick rolls up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Would it be a yellow brick road? Yeah, uh, that's would too to, obvious. It's too obvious. You, Actually, that should yeah. It has, it, sh- it has to be the yellowest brick road. The yellowest. Yeah. All right, it's, right. it's extra yeah, very yellow. yellow. Yeah. Right. Or like a super red one. Yeah. Well, watch for it, guys. In five years. <laughs> five, five years. <laughs> We're writing it tonight. We're writing it do- tonight. <laughs> a YouTube um, red series. <laughs> How sad. Yeah. So um if you're not caught up on the Game of Thrones though, mm. wow. It's getting crazy. But can we talk about it a bit or no? Do people not li- like listening to it or no? No complaints. Theories? I think it's making people watch it. I see people going like I have to watch it now to see what they say about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um spoiler alert. It's I think it's turning in turning a little weird. You've always come up with some negative shit to say. In I'm okay what with it. The show was great last week. Today was yesterday's was great. But to capture a White Walker, that's a bring him scary. to King's Landing. King's Landing, and go. Here's a White Walker mm. to convince Cersei. Fuck Cersei. She don't give a fuck. Fuck Jamie. They don't. She don't give a fuck. No, Jamie. No. Oh my, Jamie. Jamie. But like, sir, go fuck yourself. She's gonna be the Mad Queen. She's for sure gonna kill everyone. You know. Yeah. Wait, wait. They're gonna bring one down there and what? She's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I have a White Walker here. His name is the That's mountain. That's right, because she already has <laughs> a zombie. The a zombie. mountain. Yeah, the she mountain has is a, a zombie. fucking Frankenstein. She don't give a fuck. Yeah. And also, uh, my fear is, is that if if the show turns out to be this, everyone's gonna join forces. Right? They're gonna call a truce between Cersei. You know, I hope they don't. Danny. Do that. No, no, I, no, no. I think that Jamie no is gonna chance. be the one to kill Cersei. Mm. Oh, but man. if it goes into that a whole thing, it'll really upset me. They and should. here's another thing I don't like is they're trying to put a wrench between Sansa and Arya. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's bullshit, They're man. Old- we spent six years waiting for that reunion. Yeah, don't take it away from us. Yeah, let I, them get along. For I a need bit. that sisterly love. They've been through so much. Like, I need when them. They, you to know how like... they pant nails with each other mm. or whatever. Like when, when her sister would take a shower to go to like her and her sister. That's weird that you guys do that. <laughs> For the umpteenth time. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's not going to change. We yeah. just did it tonight. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but overall, I, you know what my real sadness is? What? Is it, it's what am I going to watch after it's done? Oh, what's your other shows? I don't have another one. He doesn't. This he is actually, the only this show is the you watch consistently. Show he's ever watched in a yeah. long time. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen all of the West Wing. It's a great show. Oh, that's great, right? We I stopped. Love. He stopped halfway through Westworld. I don't know why he. Fell Westworld off. got a little weird for me. Oh, it sl- gets better after that. You gotta get uh, through those two episodes that are kind of slow. Yeah. Oh, They're really? So good again. Yeah. Okay. Even better. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm gonna watch that then. Mm-hmm. Because there was a point where Dennis Hannibal Lecter or whatever. What's his, what's his uh, name? Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins, sorry. Yeah. He's out in the desert and there's like a church, like a steeple the, sticking the out child. of the de- desert or whatever. Yeah, yeah I follow the child. Weird. I'm like, got weird. <laughs> this is turning very lost, you know, well, t- there's, for me. There's different timelines is the theory. Yeah, but okay, Lost did that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They did a watching. whole year in Lost in the 70s. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Desmond could time travel. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. You know, I don't like that shit. You don't like. Well, you it's like not sci-fi. time travel. It's just it's just different timelines at the same showing you at the same time. Yeah. Okay. A little spoiler alert for that. Sorry. <laughs> I like. I also like. What else? Another show that I like. I saw all of The Wire. Mm. That's a long. And then I saw. Um, oh, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. To me, mm. Battlestar Galactica is on par with Game of Thrones. Oh wow. For its what? time, yes. For its time. Did you see it? Yeah. The new one. Yeah. I really like Battlestar Galactica. It was good, Galactica. but n- more of a Stargate. Game of Thrones. It's not a Game of Thrones, Stargate sweetie. guy. Are you crazy? Did, wait, did you not see it? No. It's so good, though. Battlestar. It's so yeah, it's good. good. It's very good. It's uh, oh, First of all, I'm going to say this, is that you have to put things into context, too, fuck not. <laughs> okay? I mean, I think yeah, Game, of Thrones, Game of Thrones. The best show ever in Game the of history Thrones, of television. I know, Game of Thrones, right? A def- definitely set up a bar. Like, a bar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is great. A show like that needs to do that so that all these other shows have to catch up and go, we have to be that good or it's not going to be a cultural phenomenon. No, no. Yeah. So that's good. But at the time, Battlestar Galactica was that show. I think it raised the level. Mm-hmm. There was prophecy involved. There was shit going on where you were like, ah, oh. like you had those shocking mm-hmm. moments in that too. Mm-hmm. Like, She's a Cylon. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Those moments. <laughs> you know, if, if those you've moments. never seen Battlestar Galactica, I'm guarantee you, watch the miniseries. So they did four miniseries, then they did four seasons on top of that. You oh, have to watch shit. the miniseries first because it just revs it up, right? It's so fucking good, man. Damn. But you know what it's about? No. Don't ruin no, it. I really want to watch, give... watch the miniseries now. Yeah. Can I just give you the premise so people listening? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I can get them hooked on it. Yeah. Okay. All right? So essentially, humans, right? We made s- robots, Cylons. Mm-hmm. The Cylons oh, revolted, Cylons. right? There was a war. Terminator. Okay. There was a war between humans and the Cylons, right? And then there was a truce. So the Cylons left and they disappeared. Mm-hmm. Now Cylons look back in the you know the original show they were metallic and clunky right so now the show picks up every year we send a human dignitary or something to this space station to meet with a Cylon representative to negotiate but for forty years they don't show up oh. so they just send you know a convoy over there we have a general sitting there waiting. They never show up, so they just get back and they go back, right? Mm -hmm. But 40 years in, they show up out of nowhere. But instead of Cylons, a human being walks in. They evolved. Oh, they're now, And what they did was they infiltrated their society. Okay? So now you don't know who's a Cylon and who's not. And oh. some of them can be like sleeper cells. Yeah, some of them, they don't even know that they're they Cylons. They don't know themselves yeah. oh, they, that yeah, they're they Cylons. Know. They don't even know. So that's, oh, yeah, yeah. so they have families and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And then 
they get turned on. Mm -hmm. It's a really good show, dude. Have you guys ever thought if we're just all androids, we don't know it? At some point, we're gonna get wait. turned on. I'm a, if they, I was probably the first version of Android then. <laughs> they probably one point. You're one point oh. Yeah, I mean, they have to improve on this model. I think I'm a very, very late model because I am a highly emotional. And my emotions have 50 different categories. No, you're an early model then. Mm. Why? Because, because early you can, emotion you know is the no. hardest thing to capture in a, in a, in a, in a cyborg. Yeah, but in every show like Data, right, yeah. from um, Star Trek, right? They make a version with emotions. It usually goes faulty. Oh, like Alien, re, the, the last Alien we Covenant. saw, the Covenant. Right, mm -hmm. same thing. Michael so Fassbender. they remove mm -hmm. the emotions out of it so he could be more functional right. and objective. So you would be the first version oh, of it. Oh, you're right, you're yeah, right. They added I'm too many. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about, since we never talked about it on this podcast, I want to know about the band that you were in um, called Lax and Superb. What about it? Um, I, I always just thought you guys were like a, a garage band. I didn't know that you guys were on television. What the fuck? Well, I, I went, television is a stretch. We did cable access. <laughs> that's big. That's a big deal. That when you're we that had young. some reviews. That was a we had some today. reviews, you know, from a paper. You had reviewers? I said from papers. I'm saying that's the worst, the worst band in San Diego, but yeah. <laughs> and um, it was me, uh -huh. Kevin Shule, Jensen Roof. And Alan Meadows. How did you guys, how did you know each other? High school. I grew up with these kids. Oh, mm. damn. And, and who played what? Kevin, guitar, Keys. Jensen, bass. I played the keyboards and Alan played drums. Who sung? Kevin. Did you guys make and, an album? And Jensen. Mm. Yeah, they did. And so it, can we find this? Well, if you look at my, um, on YouTube, you can see our performance. Oh, it's oh on my there? God. I got to yeah. pull, I'll put it on Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. It's called Lax and Suburb. You can see our performance. I think it's like a six-minute version of it, and I don't, I don't know how to get a hold of uh, the music. Oh, I think damn. you should re-release. I think you should remaster. A remastered re version. What type of music was it? It was psychedelic. Ska. It was oh. psychedelic, and um, I got thrown out of the band <laughs> for. Well, it was betrayal. That's all. How? Tell us. Oh wait. wait. This sounds like all right, so <laughs> we were doing these gigs. I was what, twenty years old, twenty-one years old. Mm-hmm. And we used to play this place called The Metaphor, which is in Escondido. It was a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And um, we met this guy named Dave, who was like 50, and his roommate, who was like 50. <laughs> was but they were good old? musicians, but <laughs> one of them was like completely like fried. His brain was fried from drugs. Mm -hmm. But they could, uh, they could play. And Kevin... And Kevin, we're young. We're in our 20s, right? So in my head, I'm like about marketing and all that stuff, right? It's like, so then Kevin just one day goes, they're in the band too now. So now we got six people in the band. Now in my head, I'm like, if we're on the cover of any magazine, you're on the edge. I'm on the edge. <laughs> half your face. Yeah, half my face, okay? Yeah. So I go, dude, uh, they're old. It looks weird now. Yeah, but they're old. really talented, good songwriters. I go, I don't give a fuck. Mm. So I stopped going to like some rehearsals that they would go do. And then Dave and the other guy, the old guy, they convinced Alan and those guys to fire me. Oh, shit. <laughs> and when I they fired me, it was like a betrayal. It was a mutiny. I mean, I went to Mount Soledad in La Jolla in my fucking car. Mm -hmm. There's a gigantic cross there. Oh, coming to Jesus moment. No, I just bent like tears in my eyes. Aww. And I prayed to God that they would all die. Oh my oh. God! Something like that. Reverse all. Wait, where are they now? Jensen lives in L.A. Alan lives in San Diego. Kevin lives in Chicago. And um, you keep in touch. I want to keep in touch with Jensen. Do it. But Tell us a story. Okay, hold on, you guys. He's he's got a, a confession to make here. I love him. Mm -hmm. I grew up with him. Mm. But if he's the type of guy, if you if he texts you, I okay. Let me. I, I just want to say, anyone listening to it right now, if you text me, you, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to text you back. Yeah. The odds are ninety percent of the ch time I'm not. Fact. Mm -hmm. I don't text like my manager called me five times today, and I just didn't feel like the call was going to be anything pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's, she's she's trying to she's trying to put me on tape for this animation thing yeah. I don't want to do. So just avoid the call. Yeah. Right? So I just completely avoid the call. 
People text me like the worst. Um, what? <laughs> the worst. Why? It's just. I don't just want responsibility. The and not, no. And then, and no, because just then, answer the call and no, because open. I don't know how to say no. So then I go, okay, I'll do it. And then oh, next, yeah. next thing I know, I'm in, I'm doing a show at a laundromat <laughs> for some fucking open mic. Say yes. This is true. That is true. Mm-hmm. I say yes to everything because I don't want to let people down. So now so I just. So all of LA has my number now yeah. because I have to be the one to say no. Yeah. So she is the like no all man. the guys that open for me on the road. They call Kalila. They'll come up to me at the club. They go, "Hey, what about?" I go, "Call Kalila." I don't want to. I have nothing it. to do with it because he used to make promises to these guys, like, "Yeah, you're coming on." I'd the have next nine day. people open and for now me. He promised <laughs> nine people. Yeah, yeah. Four hours before Bobby. Comes it was up. so fucked up what he did yeah. to them. Yeah, and it would crush people. Like mm-hmm. people would cry. Mm-hmm. It was devastating. So I don't pick up the phone, mm-hmm. and I don't return texts, or I don't return emails. Yeah, it's almost as if. But also, I do that with the mail. I have never opened the mailbox ever in my whole entire life. Mm. Wow. I check the mail. Do you know why? Why? Because I don't want to deal with it. Mm. Jury duty. Don't want to know about it. Me either. You know? Um, I don't want to know about it. Taxes. I don't want to know about it. You have accountants for that. Yeah, but I got... But the reason why I got accountants because I'd never pay taxes. Mm. Yeah. And the IRS was after me, and I had to get accountants. Yeah. Yeah. But my point is that yeah, I'm so the Jeff, kind of guy, yeah. if I get a fucking speeding ticket, I think I've said this before, mm-hmm. I'll drive super fast on the freeway so that the wind can blow it off my fucking... So you could plead. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I think the wind took it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, maybe it's probably... I'm, I'm maybe 46 almost, and maybe I should grow up a bit. But nah. <laughs> but Jensen, so Jensen... Yeah. You know, he gets really offended really quickly. Mm. He was so, one of your best friends growing up. Yeah, he was one of my best friends growing up. And I just want to deal with it. If he knows that one 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 of every 50 taxes may get a response. But okay, tell us but what's you can't, been happening. He's a regular though. guy. Well, tell us. So what he did was, what he did was up oh. until four months ago. Yeah. Is he texted me every day <laughs> for a year. Is this still your number? Is this still your number? Every, every day. day. That's not an exaggeration. It's not an exaggeration. He hated like it so much. He yeah, hated it so much. It was driving me crazy. I w- he went to the Verizon store and yeah. they couldn't figure out how to block the number. And it was just this whole debacle and he wanted to change his number. Yeah, yeah. It was just like it. psychological why, wait, wait, Why do I deserve it? For not responding. Why? How, how, about hey, George, how about this? How about this, George? Why don't you lose my number then? Oh. oh. Okay. Nah. Jora. Jora, you that fucking spider fuck. Animals. You're right. I'm t- I'm admitting that it's a ca- character defect. I'm admitting that I have to change. I have to change. I don't know when. And you want to mm. be friends with him, right? I love him. Oh, okay. He's super talented. Mm. He really is. I mean, in terms of songwriter, bro. Up there. No, I'm telling you right now, he's he's really good. And he's a good editor. He ed- he worked for MTV for years editing the real world or any, all that bullshit, yeah. you know? But he's a talented guy. He went to film school. I have a couple of his movies and DVD, mm. some documentaries he made. He made That's why I you love like this guy. That's why I like pork t- That's why I like pork tenderloin sandwiches. Oh yeah, you do, do like do pork because tenderloin. he's from Indiana and he did a documentary about pork tenderloin sandwiches. Like he went to <laughs> Indiana and would try to find the best one. Oh shit. They're yeah. the greatest sandwich. I only know about pork tenderloin sandwiches through Jensen. <laughs> Every time you say pork tenderloin. Also, he he did a documentary on fountains. <laughs> what kind? This guy's awesome. Like fountains at college campuses where the history. Be, but it's pretty interesting. What an interesting like. Yeah, he's topics. a weird guy. He's a weird guy, but he's a talented guy, and I would love him in my life. But dude, it's like I, I can't deal with the. Uh, Dalia, Chris Dalia, yells at me every time I see him. You don't return to tax. Yeah. yeah. I could not even you, King. <laughs> not even you, King. White Lightning. <laughs> White Lightning. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a character defect. That's what do you, do you ever notice I just give my number out to people? Uh yeah, it's kind of mm. Let me just hand it. Anyone out. can give my number. Because yeah. I'm never gonna pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have all these mixed Yeah. I mean every once in a while, Frank, like if I get a text, I'll read them all. Yeah. Frank died. I'll call. Mm. And I'll go, Frank died? Who's Frank? Yeah, who's Frank? <laughs> <laughs> you know, or something. Yeah. But um, but is that bad? Am I a bad guy? No. no. You just yeah. can't be bothered. Ask Will Sasso. Oh, when Will Sasso left Matt TV, Will Sasso, when I was on Matt TV, was the nicest guy one could ever be. 
when I got on that show, nobody liked me. Mm. I don't give a fuck. I, that's the truth. And I didn't like. I didn't like me. Mm-hmm. He loved me. He invited me to his house. He took oh. me out. Mm. He introduced me to people. And then when he left the show, I just didn't return his phone calls ever again. Oh. And he was mad at me for like five years. And then one day, I ran into him. And said, Do you not like me? I go, Will has nothing. I, I like. I love you. And then now, if he if he texts or calls, I return it because he's one of the only ones. Wow. Because we already at, we're at a level now where it's like he. I already know that it deeply offends him, mm. and I want him in my life. So if he texts me, I'll text him back. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Why haven't we had him on the podcast? I love We're Will. We're going to get Will really Sasso on. Is he just not in town or he something? Doesn't, he, the thing with Will is that he doesn't want to talk about personal things. I mean, I'm sure we there's a million other things we can talk about. I know, today. but then I don't want to also... I, mean, I want to talk, We ever molested. I want to ask him that. Yeah. I'm sure he's... You, oh, I, I, I don't think... I don't... I see him on podcast I don't believe you. Yeah. He's no, I will. I want, I want to do it. I want to do it. Mm. Hey guys, we got people come wanting to do our podcast. We got now, a list. Okay? Yeah, you can't name drop like that. I'm not gonna drops. name drop. I, mean, I wasn't name drop. How? Why? How was Jamie Kennedy and Paulie Shore name dropping? <laughs> Their names and they were dropping them. <laughs> Thanks, Gilbert. <laughs> I love them both. Yeah, they both helped me a lot. I love them both. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> you know? Time for a question. Time for a what question. are we at time? We're right under an hour. Wow. So this is a long one, so uh, sit down. Uh This is from our friend Patricia. (laughs) Anyways, hey guys, I'm 20 years old and I'm living in Malaysia. I have a half Indian, half Filipino parentage with my mom raising me and my siblings as a single mother. She grew up in a poor family in the Philippines and had to be mature at a very young age, which I think is the reason as to her being brutally blunt to me ever since I was a kid. She raised me in the way her parents raised her where they had to be tough to survive. I always found it hard to talk to her and was closer to my dad, but he passed away. So with him passing, I found it very difficult in my teenage years, Just uh, and it was like hell between me and my mom. But now that I'm older, our relationship is way better despite not seeing eye to eye in almost everything. Growing up, her bluntness really affected me and eventually learned to just keep quiet and not say anything to avoid a bigger argument. This is also mainly the guilt because she has to stay in the country to take care of us, leaving her family in the Philippines, leaving with no one of her, living with no one of her own race. But lately with me trying to pursue art and her pursuing me to be a nurse, we've been arguing way too much again and I'm second guessing myself. I don't want to be a burden to her even though, even longer, but I grew up never voicing out my opinion, always accepting her decisions out of guilt. And for once, I want to stand up for myself. But with her being blunt and saying things like, I don't even have talent for it, I keep feeling guiltier by the day and even starting to resent her a little. Yeah. And I know I shouldn't because I know her. She's not saying it to be mean. It's just her being honest. My art just doesn't impress her. But it still hurts and I don't want to hate her. And I I've don't already want talked her to about this, man. It's yeah. like you, you. it's almost good that you have a dad or mom like that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because you, you push through it. Yeah. If you think that my parents know exactly what I do, they don't. They know now. I, I you know. Mm. I, but but I don't give a fuck. I have to do it. It's what I'm doing. They may not, she may not respect you for it now, today, or in the immediate future, but she will eventually, as long as, and I think that yeah, when any, he, she makes it. Yeah, but she's, if you just, you know, if you just, like Bobby said, push through it, work hard towards it, mm-hmm. you know, show her that you can, you know, have this life outside of being a nurse, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, it, over time, she'll she'll get it. And I think, and I, you can't blame the mother too. She's very similar to my mom, where it's just whatever it takes to survive is what you have to do. You, that's it's that's it, just the it, way she thinks. It's unchangeable, and I will never expect her to be fully happy with what I do with my life now. But there's a mutual respect there. When I first told her, like, "Hey, uh, sorry, I did finish nursing school. I spent a ton of money." you know, on student loans mm-hmm. or I borrowed a lot of money, but I don't want to be a nurse. Imagine hearing that. Imagine mm-hmm. like, well, fuck, like now you're in your mid twenties and you're turning your back on something you spent, you know, three years of your life doing or working towards, mm-hmm. but you got to keep your foot down. And like I said, she's not going to, she's not going to love it now, but she'll respect it, you know, in time. Mm. It sucks having parents that had a hard life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like my parents grew up during the Korean War. My mom, you know, my mom's 
she saw her sister die. Mm-hmm. A, a military truck ran her sister over. That's, I think I've talked about that yeah, before. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. I, when, when I was when a kid, she talks I, about it. She still gets choked yeah. up. Too. When I was a kid, I'd be like, "Dad, my friend Billy, he just fell off his skateboard and he broke his ankle, and now he can't skateboard anymore." He'd be like, "Oh yeah, in Korea, in the Korean War, my friend Hun, his head explode." <laughs> I just one up you. You know what I mean? Like he they one up you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like whatever you have to tell them yeah. is nothing. It's it like means my, nothing. Shit's my worse, mom's yeah. favorite story is when if you when we were younger and we would complain about being hungry and you know kids were like, I'm starving and we're not starving. We yeah. just had a meal like four hours ago. And she would constantly remind us, like, do you know that your uncle Carlo used to eat rice with strawberry toothpaste? Like that's that was his. Yeah. It was like toothpaste Wait, and what? rice, like, because it was a flavored toothpaste. Yeah, and he would eat it with rice. That's how poor they were. And when she was really hungry to try to, um, kind of stall her hunger a little bit, they would eat like pieces of rock salt oh, to try yeah. to like fill up the stomach, <laughs> so your stomach would bloat, you know, and you would feel seemingly full. Yeah, you know, that's what my mom did. Yeah, yeah. and because she was one of ten children in a very very like poor household. So, yeah, like in her and I get this, Patricia, like it's we get it. We get what it's like to have parents like that who don't see anything for you. But, you know, just one job. Mm. But, um, you know, you just I, I was ahead. at a, I was at a hang, hamburg, well, hamburger Hamlet Hamlet used to be in Beverly Hills. It was mm. a restaurant called hang, Hamburger Hamlet. I loved it. Nice Steak flavor. fries. Really good. I was sitting <laughs> there to that. And some kid, got, this like eight year old kid, got a hamburger. The waitress brings it to it. Her, his dad, you know, goes, "Okay, Billy, eat it." He goes, "I'm not hungry. I want spaghetti." Uh oh. And he went, oh, "All right." In three hours, you know, your mom will will get her to make you spaghetti. God. They left the hamburger there. God. If I did that, mm-hmm. you could- he would he wouldn't make me eat it, my dad. But I ain't getting spaghetti. Mm-hmm. I'm eating that hamburger until I eat it. Yeah. Three days later, if I still haven't eaten that hamburger, I'm not going to get a new meal. Yeah, you go to it's sleep hungry. It's that specific hamburger I have to eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you, or you go to sleep hungry. We weren't allowed to complain. We weren't even allowed to leave a morsel of rice on the plate. Yeah. Same. Like, it's just, you know, it's wasteful. Like, it's just a different, a different world. And so I always tell Bobby, it's like, we lived a very charmed life, a very, very easy life compared to our parents. Who did? All of us. And even when I, 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 you know, I lived off of Payless shoes and bus passes, like bus tokens. Like I didn't have fancy things growing up, but compared to my mom, I lived a, a luxurious life, a very privileged life. But you know what? I want to argue against that. What? Sometimes people grew up during war torn, you know, at times. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean that my spiritual pain is you know not w- worthy I think spiritual pain is a fucking privilege no spiritual pain I'll tell you Spirit, why I, no just stop ideas are only like people with spiritual I- pain <laughs> spiritual pain is the worst pain that you could have it's worse than diarrhea it's worse than fucking gall st- st- stone bladder whatever it's a not, bullet wound. It, spiritual pain is the worst kind of pain, friend. It's not worse than hunger pain. I'm telling you that right now. Spiritual pain comes after you've been fed. That's something a well-fed person says. I'm well, spirit, we having argue. a spiritual breakdown, really, because I'm fucking hungry, bitch. When you have to survive and your basic your basic needs aren't or when met, your soul's food, being raped. clothing, shelter. Ooh. Oh man, what? I'm not eating. My soul's being raped. Come on. No, you're not getting what I'm saying, but I digress. Well, anyway. <laughs> Patricia. <laughs> Patricia, stay in it. Stay in the game. Stay in the game. Patricia. Stay in the game. Keep well, doing that was a art. nice, great podcast. Um, <laughs> Any shows? No. Yes, he oh. does. Oh. Come on. <laughs> See, he doesn't want to think about it. August 25th, Bobby will be in New Mexico at Star Casino. Ooh. I think it's in Albuquerque. August 25th. It's in Albuquerque. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not here until the 26th. No, he is coming back just for in time for the fights. McGregor. Maybe yeah. Other nice. Yeah. Uh, the slaughter. You uh, think? You think? Tell yes. us your thoughts. <laughs> if 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 boxing rules is slaughter for McGregor, if it was mixed martial arts, slaughter, slaughter for Mayweather. Mm. 
There's no way you can set up that fight where it's fair. Well, you say he won't win one round. It, it also depends on what the gloves, what ounces the gloves are. They are they still trying to get the, They're the trying to get it over smaller right now? Yeah. Into what? Eight? Eight. Eight would be still, though. What is a UFC blood glove? Four. And then they're right now they're currently at 12 or 10 or whatever. 10 or 12. Mm-hmm. I would they're do, 10 I would right do now. four. Oh, boxing rules? Four. Oh, Jesus. Really? So what else would you change aside from like the gloves? And have the ring smaller so he, doesn't, he can't run around. Mm. Uh, the like, ring is already smaller than a regular size octagon. Yeah, no, make it smaller. I'll tell you why. Because he can't grapple, right? Yeah. My point is, is this: is that a fight is when you're fighting, <laughs> not when you're running around and dodging. Oh, I see. You know, oh, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. stopped at that. fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mayweather doesn't fight. He wants to win because mm. there's judges. That's fine. I get it, but it's not fair to Connor. So I think it's going to be a slaughter. But if Connor can hit him one good one with his left, good night. Good night. You think? Connor's left is devastating. I mean, it knocked out Josie Aldo. It's knocked out. Uh, what's Eddie his name? Alvarez. El- Eddie Alvarez. I mean, it's, it's scary. It's yeah. a scary one. Mm. And, and this is how scary Connor is. I know he fought Max Holloway, but he definitely won that fight yeah, between man. Max Holloway. Max Holloway ran over Jose Aldo. Yeah. yeah. But that's how good Connor is. Yeah. This is when Max Holloway was younger, too. And, you know. And Connor did I, half the fight with the uh, torn ACL. I'd want to see Max Holloway and Connor again now, though. Because I'll I think that two. Max Holloway is a completely, you know, gr- he's really growing into yeah. a different kind of beast. Yeah. Mm. But nothing, no one's better than that Robert Whitaker. <laughs> Love him. Love him. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening, Bye. guys. George, uh, anything you want to uh, share? Uh, just remember, if you want great sheets, go to brooklinen.com uh, with the promo code BELLY. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. That's all I got. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jora. Sorry, Jora. I didn't mean to laugh, Jora. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram at TigerBelly, on Twitter at the Tiger Belly. Uh, and email us any questions or unhelpful advice uh, at the tiger belly at gmail.com. You can follow, follow Kalila on all social media at, at Calamity K. I also want to do a quick shout out sure. to my friends in Hawaii, mm-hmm. um, Sean and Chase, who we went out in the ocean with, and um, they're um, local guys. And I've been friends with Sean for a few, year not, a few years now. He's, he's, he's awesome. So thanks for taking the time to take us girls around. And um, yeah. Cool. Um, what else? Did I not want to mention something else? I, feel I like had you're forget- it in you're my forgetting head. something. I feel like you want you you forgot something. I had it in my head, but you know me, it's like the ADD. It's just. Oh yeah, you uh you lost fifteen pounds in Hawaii. Oh my god, quite the opposite. Oh. <laughs> Fresh quite- fifteen. <laughs> oh my! I just ate everything there. It was like ube pancakes. Uh, you know, it's ube for pancakes. somebody for a Filipino. Hawaii is sort of a dream. Loco moco, mm. just rice for breakfast. Everything that I like is there. I'll be honest. I'm not like a fan of loco moco. Maybe How? Had, I'll say that because I like meatloaf. I like meat patties, and I love burgers. But sometimes loco moco, maybe having a good one, if they're just so dense. That it's just like, but that's the beauty of it. There you go. The rice, the gravy, the meat, the egg on top of it. You break the egg, the onions. The, ugh, so good. Man, your face, Jesus. <laughs> I know. It was just like it was such a dream, you know. And um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually haven't gone on vacation or traveled that far since my fiasco the in the Philippines. Mm. So this was a really big confidence boost for me to be nice. able to not only travel that far, but to do as much as I did, and um. I crossing my fingers, but I think I'm turning a new leaf, and I think that I'm just going to keep moving forward without the fear of something possibly happening to like my heart. I talked to my cardiologist today. I have a Zeo patch on right now. Oh, that's what and that I told is. him it's like I just want to fucking leave this in the dust. As a matter of fact, I don't even want to know what's wrong with me anymore. Boom. I think it's almost better if I just like I'm unaware of what might go wrong. So I can just, you know, mm. move on like I used to. So it was a really big deal for me, and it was a really special time. And I'm so glad, like Bobby and my whole family was there. So that's awesome. 
Uh, so guys, uh, well, now that Claudia can travel, uh, <laughs> maybe we can go to Australia po- now. Post yeah. on the uh, if you're listening and post on the Instagram uh, post of this or on the YouTube comments. Where should Kalila travel next? Wait, are you coming with me? Yeah. Okay, you promise? Only if it's I. I think renew my passport. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, we, can finally do, we can finally do the Philippines trip. Yeah, no, I would I'll love that. that. Yeah. I would absolutely if love. You have that. no more fear anymore. I'm down. I have a plenty of fear. It, talking about it, my hands are sweaty. Touch okay, it. Okay, I can see it from here. <laughs> <laughs> I can see all that water. No, no, like I have, I have a lot of anxiety still, but like I'm working on it. I'm, uh, you know, I've been reading this book, and it's oh, it's like helping me out tremendously. It's the Bible. You know, they always tell you you go to like um. You go to, you know, I see a therapist and stuff. They're always like, meditate, do this. But there's there's a better way. You don't have to fight your anxiety. You just have to live with it. And you have to learn to live comfortably with it. To say, you know what? To not have a fear of that fear. To, to allow it to be there is I'm telling you half the battle. Because when you get the wave of anxiety, that, that first sense of like nervous arousal, and you don't know why or where it's coming from, then you think, mm. oh, is it my heart? Am I dying? Then it's like that sense of doom. What When it becomes that avalanche effect is when you start to fear that sensation. I don't want this to happen again. So when you start to fe- feel it, it, be- it just snowballs into something worse. Mm. So if you initially feel it and you say, you know what? This is just nervous arousal. It's uncomfortable. It, my heart rate's going to go up, but I'm going to allow it. I'm going to sit with it and I'm going to le- let it be. And I'm in, as a matter of fact, I'm going to e- ask for more. Mm. It's almost like mm. counter, in, it's like counterintuitive. Give it, give me your best shot. Give all the anxiety to me versus fearing it and trying to push it away. Mm. Mm. Take and, it on, yeah. And there's this book called Dare, and I think it's the same writer as Panic Away, and a Tiger Belly listener, and I'm telling you, I forget your name, but you saved my fucking life. And you're the reason that I even had the balls to travel she wow. sent the book to hawaii no he didn't send it okay. he wrote me and he was like look this really helped me out and it's been a godsend for me Amazing. i'm telling you i've been through therapy for so many years and nobody quite puts it like this book does it's by a guy named barry uh, mcdonagh and if you suffer from crippling anxiety to the point where you no longer f- you feel like a shell of yourself you don't want to travel mm. you're you're always thinking about hospitals in the vicinity you don't want to get in a car because you don't want to be too far away from your safe place my home this is my safe place mm. you need to read this book and i i think that in time when you practice allowing that nervous arousal to just and to live with it it just becomes less of an enemy you know, it's not an enemy. It's just your adrenaline and your nerves and you just have to see it like that. And it's never going to go away. You just have to say, okay, mm. it's here. And, you know, and work work with it, mm-hmm. not against it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that helps anyone, but no, it helps me. A lot of so emails. if you suffer from it, yeah. try the book and, you know, let me know how, how it helps you. But whoever wrote I'll, I'll look back into my instagram messages thank you for that sir. thank you you you're the best cool uh also packages if you want to send anything to our p.o box uh the address is 1626 north wilcox number 161 hollywood california 90028 bye guys bye see you guys next week